Okay, welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. We're out on this uh, lake here and on this beautiful morning. What we're going to do is we're going to capture some um, hyperlapse B-roll with the spark of the sun. So what I'm going to do is I've already checked hover and everything. I'm clear to fly, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this up. And I'm simply going to let it settle in for a minute or so. And I'm going to yaw it around because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it kind of straight up and out. Because I want to get as the sun moves through the, um, sort of moves through the clouds. So I'm going to take this up and out. And uh, I want to get the video started. And I don't want pictures. So I've got the video started. Now I'm going to yaw it around. So uh, I'm just going to work on capturing the, the video of this as the clouds move and sort of do the whole hyperlapse thing of the, uh, the water. Uh, because I mean, again, this morning with the clouds and everything above the lake, it's absolutely beautiful. I've got some ships coming down. I'm going to probably capture them. For an upcoming episode as they come down so right now i just really want to grab you know footage as the clouds move there's just some beautiful cloud formations out there hopefully you can i got my head tipped up high enough with the hat cam you can see them so this is one of the things i think that the uh, uh you know spark is just great for even though it's only 1080p video i think again for youtube i'm just really sold on this thing as a youtube copter being able to, with the two-axis gimbal, to really get solid footage as it's getting up there right now. And, uh, you know, again, the only gripe I got about it is I'd love about two more minutes of flight time on it. Uh, two more minutes, I think, would really make it great because by the time you get out and back, um, two minutes would add a lot in travel time. But anyways, it's just hovering up there. I'm not very high at all. I'm only about 30 feet or so. Uh, again, I'm just using it sort of as a tripod in the sky to, to get this sort of, uh, I don't want to call it a panorama because I'm not doing a panorama, but panoramic uh, or cinematic probably is a better way to put it, video, as the clouds move through here this morning. It's quite cold here actually in Michigan. It's only about 47 degrees and we're still in August, which is really just sort of crazy uh, that it's really just still so cold out here. It had gotten so cold uh, already this morning or in this month. So, uh, but again, beautiful morning. I just love the cloud vistas out here, um, you know, in the morning over the lake. You know, as I mentioned before, as flying here, what happens is the, uh, and I'm not sure I'm meteorologically correct, uh, so those out there maybe a little bit more astute can, can uh, point out the errors in my way, but uh, kind of like a low pressure area forms over the lake here. Because as we look down here, this is actually the end of Lake Huron. This is where it turns into the river. And then up here is where it gets really, really wide and becomes the lake. And, uh, you know, that side is Canada. You know, up there, you go up, to, up the thumb of Michigan all the way up to the top of the mid of Michigan. If you see my hands, it will go all the way around up here to the Mackinac Bridge. And what happens is, is the weather just seems to race down this lake. So, um, and it tends to want to stay over the water because it's gaining energy from the water, the heat convections, both positively and negatively in the summer. And, uh, you know, but once it hits down here, we get some interesting cloud formations. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll actually even see on the Canadian side, they, they get the brunt of it worse than we do. We're on the west side of the lake. They're on the east side of the lake. And they get a bigger brunt. They even get water spouts in that uh, over there. Because as the weather rushes down, it kind of curves back on itself over here. So it's, a lot of times you'll see water spouts over there. Uh, but anyways, you get interesting cloud formations. And it's kind of, uh, you know, strange too. Sometimes you'll get just, you know, rain over the lake. And uh, again, very interesting weather, weather phenomenon. And again, we're just still hanging out up there. Um, just as nice as could be. It's just like a tripod in the sky. It's just phenomenal. And you can kind of see the sun has moved behind that big dark cloud bank. And those other cloud banks are sort of just slowly moving in.
I'm going to be moving a little bit more this morning for the hyperlapse. Um, but what I wanted to do is definitely get the sun kind of moving through the cloud bank. I'm hoping, in which I'm still looking pretty good on battery, so I'm at, uh, I think it's saying about eight minutes left on the battery. I'm hoping that I get the sun, I got enough air time where the sun rises above that bank of clouds. So sunrise was about 6.20 this morning. Um, I got out here about 6.40, about 20 minutes after sunrise. Yeah, I slept in a little bit late. I was hoping to get here for sunrise. One of the things I am going to do uh, after Labor Day, because after Labor Day, uh, you know, sunrise is going to start getting closer and closer to 7, and then actually past 7 at some point. But uh, get out here um, and, and get the sun actually rising, because I want to do it here and then also get it so it's down uh, further down the beach, too. So again, we're just still sitting up there hovering away, capturing video. So, uh, you know, again, let's see, I've got about five minutes, six minutes or so of video. Um, I'm also going to do a couple other episodes this morning, uh, other flights, other B-rolls, that kind of stuff, uh, because I definitely want to get a lot more of the B-rolls in. I want to start collecting some of the footage for, you know, other personal projects that I'm doing. Um, you know, to cut in, because you can never have enough B-roll. And that's sort of why I want to do a few of these episodes where I'm just kind of showing, because what will happen is, uh, you know, again, I'll show you the end product uh, when we're finished, uh, what this B-roll could look like. And, you know, again, how you could use the Spark to actually create some very good B-roll. And again, I think, um, you know, if you're 107 licensed, in, because you have to be 107 licensed to use this commercially, you know, in other words, to sell the video and to stock footage and everything. And that's not my intent here. Uh, it, you know, this intent is just to use it for my personal library. But I still think this would be good. Now, I know 4K brings a better buck in the stock, fo in the stock video world. And, uh, but I still think, you know, uh, you know uh, 1080p is really not that bad. And again, one of the things, and that's why I kind of stress for YouTube, because one of the things on the on, on my channel, at least, over 80% of my viewers, you guys, big thumbs up to you guys, are watching on a mobile device. So, I, you know, part of me feels, you know, if I do 4K, what am I going to do with 4K? Now, if I'm a Casey Neistat, I'm going to get all cinemagraphic or something like that, you know, okay, I get it. You know, definitely, I, I don't knock 4K at all. And if the Spark could do 4K, I would love it. It's just that I really just, you know, kind of get some of the detractors uh, on 4K. Now, you know, again, I've rambled about this a little bit in the past. Why 4K? When you're editing, you can crop, you have a lot more to crop with in 4K than you do 1080p. For practical purposes, in 1080p, you got what you got because you really need to go 1080p in your uploads. Um, for some of the stuff, I'll do 720 for more tutorials where I don't need uh, the real image depth. But you know, for something like this, you got to be at least 1080p for the impact to really hit. So uh, the other piece that we have uh, for the B-roll piece. We still have only light waves out here. I was hoping, yeah, maybe a little bit more waves. This is one time, you know, I got almost no wind today. Um, you know, so I was hoping for a little bit more with the waves. I think you kind of see a little bit. We really don't have any major breakers here, just really minor stuff. It's hoping for a little bit more because what I'm hoping to see in the B-roll video as I hyperlapse it is the flow of the water kind of sped up and, and that kind of stuff. So, uh... Actually, it looks like we got a couple ships coming uh, down lake, so that's a good thing. So, kind of excited about that. Uh, capture some video of them uh, when they get a little bit closer. They're still probably about five miles out. I don't know what the heck. Can let me readjust you guys. I don't know if you can see them way, 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 way out there. Actually, I think there's three ships. There's one I think that just uh, anchored or, or waiting out there. Then there's uh, two or three more. It looks like I can't tell. One definitely looks downbound. Maybe even two downbound. Um, maybe even three. It's one's way, way out there, probably about ten miles out. So uh, again, just hanging out up there. We're we're going we're heading down to a low battery warning. The ha sun really hasn't cleared the other side. I'm going to. Um, it's going to return to home point pretty soon. So I'm. At
to bring it back and bring it down on its own. And I'm going to still keep the video running and I'll just clip the video. I tell you what, this is one super little copter. I'm actually thinking about buying a second one. Okay, you're complaining. And uh, this 3D printed landing pad actually has worked pretty good. Okay, so we've landed it. So, uh, pretty good flight. Again, beautiful views, beautiful vistas out there. So, I tell you what, let's cut over, take a look at the hyperlapse that we've created from this video footage, and uh, see what it looks like. So we took a look at that hyperlapse. Turned out really great, didn't it? Um, again, I'm going to do another episode to try to get a little bit more hyperlapse. And, and the other thing too, when these ships come down, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about maybe uh, trying to get a hyperlapse of them. So again, I'm going to do a little bit of a series here with this, just kind of scenery, a little bit of rambling, a little bit of talking about the stuff. You know, sort of like my atypical flying the spark vlog concept that uh, I'm trying to perfect. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this flight. Beautiful views, if nothing else. And uh, hey, if you liked it, smash that thumbs up down below. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, subscribe button's coming up over there. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this whole B-roll thing. And um, what are you doing for B-roll? Hit me up in the comments. I always like to learn things from you guys. So that's always cool, too. And uh, what's for lunch today? I don't know. KFC sounds good. But anyways, I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.